Steve Peterson here with Infinity Investments and welcome to our channel where we talk all things commercial and investment real estate. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the pipeline principle. Now, this pipeline principle is not something I made up, it's something I teach to my real estate agents and it's very, very important in all worlds of sales. But I'm going to talk to you about how that the pipeline principle directly relates and is important to real estate investors also real estate developers, and anybody who is a professional in the real estate business who is needing to make deals happen, all right? And so the first part of the pipeline principle is, you know, really basic. Essentially, you need to generate leads, all right? Now, that's, now I, I, this is something we teach to our agents, right? But again, to the investor, you've got to generate prospective property leads. If you're an agent, you got to... Uh, develop prospective sellers and buyers, investors. If you're a developer, prospective sites, whatever it is, you've got to have a system of continually bringing these opportunities your way on, on, on an ongoing and continuous basis. And notice that I said system, all right? Because if you're relying on yourself to do all the hustling and muscling to bring in these leads, once you get the business, once you get going, then it becomes difficult to generate leads. So you need a system to continuously generate leads. And I got a, a coach in the commercial real estate business, Coach Bob McComb, Top Dogs Commercial Real Estate. He always says that you got three businesses. When you're running a business, you got three businesses you run. You got lead gen, lead conversion, and the actual practice of what your business is. So that applies everywhere, right? So the pipeline principle starts with leads. Now. It seems pretty basic, right? But I think this is the biggest challenge to all people in real estate sales, all people in real estate investors. Real estate investors don't got enough leads. So what do y'all do? Y'all go to LoopNet, you go to the internet, and you look and see what's on the market. Something that everyone else has seen, right? So you need to figure out ways to systematically generate leads that are off market. If you're an agent, you don't, you can't go list the property that's on market. Now, if the property goes expired, you can call that person. But you've got to develop a system of generating leads that are not listed yet, right? And that applies to investors, developers, and agents. And just give you a couple of things that we do on a consistent basis to do that. Number one is cold call. Yeah, I know it's old school, but it <laughs> generates leads, especially in commercial real estate because our business, our business let's face it, it's an old school business, right? So you got to pick up the phone and dial, especially if you're just getting in the business and you don't know anyone, right? Because you got to, you know, you've got to talk directly to the sellers, the property owners, okay? Another great way of generating leads is direct mail. Another old school method, but if done right, you brings you leads. Now, what the type of leads that we want are the seller leads, all right? Now, again, it's across all platforms, your broker. You're an investor, you're a developer, you want seller leads. So you gotta talk directly to the seller. Cold call, direct mail, great ways to do that. Now, another way is targeted advertising online. Whether that's Google ads, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, you can target pretty succinctly, especially through groups, who owns property and, and develop an advertisement that would attract them to call you. And you've got to figure out, figure that out and do it on an ongoing basis. It's not a one-time thing. You don't run an ad in one month. Say, oh, I didn't work. But when you run an ad, whether that's print ad, online, direct mail, whatever, it's got to be a program. You got to run it three to six months in a row, tweak it, and kind of go for there. All right? And so there's just a couple of ideas. There's a whole myriad of ways of how you can go out and generate seller leads, right? And if you just Google seller leads on YouTube, I'm sure you'll get a bunch of other videos. Bottom line, man, you got to have them coming in, all right? Because that's the, the fundamental part of your pipeline. Now, next thing you need to do is you need to work on your lead conversion system. So when you are analyzing properties to evaluate, you got to get a bunch of them to look at. And I've heard through, read a lot of Robert Kiyosaki books. And one thing he said that stuck out to me earlier is that you... Any investor worth, worth your salt, you got to look and evaluate at least 100 properties to get to one property that makes sense for you, right? Hopefully, you know, you can streamline some things to where you're not actually running numbers on that many properties. But the bottom line is, you got to look at a lot of properties. That's why we talked about lead gen first, all right? Now, you have to have a metric to say, 
you know, how are we going to convert these leads into deals, right? If you're an investor, the first thing now, now you are doing a little bit more screening of those deals. Now, the screening of those deals starts with you having a clear outline investment criteria. I've got other videos on how to define your investment criteria, but bottom line is you need to know what you want. All right. And you're not to say, you don't want to just say, Hey, I'm just looking for a good deal. No, you want to be like, well, I'm looking for properties that are between five and six percent cap rate, that have significant upside in the rents, where I can generate eight to ten percent cash on cash return and at least twenty to twenty-five percent internal rate of return. In other words, you need to be specific about what you're looking to get back in return. You also need to be specific about the areas and types of locations. Any given city can have multiple types of locations. Like in Oakland, for instance, man, you're gonna have some A. B, C, D, F, G areas where <laughs> the prices can vary wildly. One area where a multi-million dollar, thousand dollars a square foot. One area where it's going to be a little bit rough around the edges, right? You know what I mean? And it's tough like that, all right? Every city has those areas. You need to figure out where you're comfortable with and where you want to make money at. Let me just say this. Don't necessarily look at your investment properties as where you want to live. Totally different, all right? And for a lot of y'all, y'all may be investing out of state or out of area. So don't look about where you want to live. Look at in terms of what rate of return, what do you want to get, what are you willing to deal with? Some people want more cash flow, so you might be dealing with a tougher neighborhood. Some people want more appreciation and growth, so now you got to invest in a more, you know, higher dollar neighborhood. So that all goes back to what your investment criteria is, which is why you need to clearly define that. And as you go through and evaluate your deals, you have to do your property analysis. Again, I got a bunch of videos on how to run numbers and do your property analysis. The numbers need to fit your investment criteria. That's the number one thing about converting leads in investment is making sure the numbers match your criteria. If they don't match, move on. Too many people get emotional because the building looks great. It, it, it got you excited. Remember, we're not making emotional decisions here in commercial real estate. Now, let me just say it like this. People, human beings, make emotional decisions even in commercial real estate that are justified by logic. What, what I'm saying and what a lot of people in the business that are smart are saying, look, look at the logic first, right? And, and make sure the numbers match up with your criteria. Now, for the salespeople out there in, in, in the world, lead conversion is a little bit different, man. You, you, somebody comes to you and says, sell my property. You're not necessarily trying to qualify them out, although you might be. But what you're really trying to do is bring them into your ecosystem. So when you're qualifying or you're converting leads, what I'm going to say to you is this. Is you just need a program to be able to bring the ideal customer, your lead that is now coming to your database, bring that person to an actual client. And the way we do it is we like to set up a series of meetings. When we first get a lead, we want to book an appointment. We want to sit down, we want to talk to people. And when we do this, the main thing I tell our agents is to make sure that you are asking what, how type questions, and then you listen to the person. You ask questions and you listen and you move them along to the next step. So if you set up a listing appointment, you want to go in there, you don't want to just go into how great you are, how great your company is. You want to listen, you want to ask questions. And you want to move them to the next step. Hopefully that's signing a listing agreement. But if it's not, maybe it's a follow-up meeting. And in between that follow-up meeting, you can send them something of value. And I, and I advocate sending uh, you know, uh, uh, investors things of value that they can use in their, investor, in their investment career as you're bringing them along the process and getting them to do business with you. So the biggest thing I say about the lead conversion in the real estate sales is ask questions that are designed to get the client thinking and talking about what they want. And the more you do that, you build rapport with them. And the more rapport you build, the more real questions that you do. You are qualifying them in a sense because you're making sure that they're the right customer for you. But what you're really doing is building rapport with them. And also they're telling you valuable information that you can use to make sure that you, know, you do business with them. So that's very, very important about lead conversion. And so for investors and agents, it's a little bit different, but it's the same principle implies. You basically have to know what you want, know what your ideal customer is, know what your set criteria is, and make sure all the leads that you have, you bring them through that, that conversion process. Here's the one thing is try to minimize things getting lost between the cracks. 
I can say I've lost a lot, lost out on a lot of business from letting deals, people, etc., <laughs> slip between the cracks. So what I've been spending a lot of time on is investing into my process, investing into our system to make sure that don't happen. Because you never know what deal is going to be the big one for you. Something that you think might be, be big may fall apart. Somebody that you may discard or a deal you might discard, I'm not going to happen. That might be the one that you need. So just make sure you have a system and a process that doesn't let things slip between crap. And the last thing I want to talk about on the pipeline principle is closing. Okay, and you've heard about the acronym all ABCs always be closing from the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross movie. If you're in real estate, you probably saw that movie. It's an old school Alec Baldwin movie about, you know, selling real estate. So, and, and, and always be closing is accurate. I think you have to always be closing in everything that you do. So everything that you do within this process is moving towards a close, especially in sales. It doesn't mean you're some over anxious, overbearing, pushy salesperson. But it means that every question you ask, everything you do is developed on the building rapport, getting information and moving the sale forward towards a close and asking the right questions. And again, when you in the conversion process, you're going to ask more open ended questions. Once you get to the bottom line, the brass tacks is now it's time to ask for the sale. Now it's time to ask for the deal. If you're an investor, maybe now time to negotiate the brass tacks of the deal that you're in. But when you get there, hopefully, that's why I say you have to always be closing throughout the process. You've developed the rapport. You've gathered the necessary information. You made them feel comfortable. You know what they truly uh, need and desire. And you know how your product, service, especially your deal, can answer that. Or if you're an investor, you know, hey, these are the needs, the wants, the pain points of the seller. Here's what I can do to solve that problem. And then when you get to the close, you present yourself and you go in and you ask for that deal, all right? There's all kind of different closing tactics and um, techniques depending on what you're doing, when you're doing it. The bottom line, I think, is to make sure that you're prepared for that throughout the process and when you get there, it's gonna be a lot more natural, okay? And remember to ask for the deal, you know, after you got to the end. Don't, don't ask them like, hey, what do you think about it? You know, you want to ask, like, if you're at a listing presentation, you're going through it, you built your rapport, you said, here's the listing presentation, you know, you, you, you don't want to, hey, what do, you, what do you think about it? You want to, you want to say something, well, when do you want to get your, your property sold? Well, I want to get it sold next week. Okay, there you go. Let's get this listing agreement signed. Let's get this property in the market. Let's get your property sold and we can start looking at the next up leg for your exchange. All right. Or if you're an investor, you have that price, you've gone through you walk the property, you've done the numbers, you've looked at it, you talked to the other broker. All right, now it's time to put your offer on the table. Put your offer on the table, the other broker calls you back, are you crazy, this number's too low? And you know, you know, uh, all this type of stuff, you wanna ask some calibrated closing questions. Well, look, what's it gonna to take to get this deal done? Simple, simple. I learned that from a very expensive, experienced investor. Doesn't mean that you're gonna give them what it takes, but what does it take to get this deal done? Is a great question. That forces that seller or that broker to give you, hey, well, this is where it's going to be. Because you know, when we're in investing, it's a lot, we're in negotiation, a lot of back and forth. The more of these type of what and how questions you can ask, you can build rapport, but you can also get valuable information you need to close the deal. All right? So the, the, it starts with your funnel, starts with your leads, it, it then goes to your lead conversion. And then it ends up getting to the brass tacks of closing the deal. Make sure you ask great questions. You might ask what and how questions. And you don't ask them what they think. You just move forward with a positive assumption of the sale, asking questions to the end, and you get your deal done. But the bottom line is, y'all, it starts with leads. You got to have leads. You got to convert the leads and you got to close the deal. I hope this was helpful to y'all in either your sales business or in your investing career. If it is, throw me a like. Subscribe to the station, but let's definitely stay tapped in. Let's do some business. Best of success to you and your investing or sales career. Peace out.